everyone, it's time for a live look at the astrology. My name is Kay Sweetman. This is your look at the astrology for January um, 8th through 14th, 2024. I'm smiling because my, my, my dog decided to jump up right before I started. So he will be, I guess, part of the broadcast today. So if you're watching live, as always, please say hello. We've got, we got a lot to talk about. I mean, I know that it's the new year. It's uh, 2024. And I really hope that you were able to watch my three hour 2024 presentation. It wasn't just three hours of minutiae. You know, part of that time is actually going through each of the 12 zodiac signs and by extension, the rising signs. So you can see one of the big highlights and the big takeaways, not just for the year, but for you as well. So this week, it's the new year. We have a Capricorn new moon. We are coming, or rather we are at presently, the midpoint of the eclipses. And it's just something that I've noticed having sort of just observed astrology as, as long as I have, um, that's things typically happen around the midpoint of the eclipses. It sort of threads its way back to the eclipses of, in this case, October 14th of 2023, and then the eclipses to come. And um, April 8th, well, there'll be one on March uh, 23rd, no, wait, that's not right. March 25th, there'll be a Libra lunar eclipse, but on April 8th, there'll be an Aries solar eclipse. So yeah, talked all about the upcoming eclipses. I talked all about Saturn and, and, and how Pisces is a major focus for the year. And you may be thinking, I'm not a Pisces, but Pisces is a particular part and it may actually be a key part of your astrology, depending on your sun sign and depending on your rising sign. So I have my uh, video for 2024, I'll have link is in the show notes, and I actually did an interview with Alyssa Hawking. Um, we, I think we spoke last year on this time where I kind of gave my big highlights for 2024, and uh, that link is in the show notes. And one of the things I talked about is how, and I even did this in a webinar, that 2024 is a bridge why? Well, because so much emphasis on Pisces as in the astrology of 2024, Pisces is the, the last sign of the zodiac. It's a bridge between one end of the zodiac and the other, one chapter and another, one life and another. So it's possible that 2024 is leading us because we have some bigger astrological shifts in 2025 and 2026 when well Pluto changes signs and we will talk about Pluto especially next week because it's going to go back into Aquarius but it fully goes back into Aquarius in November of this year um, and that sort of is right before the Saturn dips into Aries, Uranus dips into Gemini, um, we also have Neptune dipping into Aries. So a lot of big things a year, a year, year and a half away but uh, yeah so I talked about that in my interview uh, with Delissa Hawking so get the link in the show notes. So before I get too far in, I'm just saying hello to the people watching live. I see some familiar faces and you guys get to see my dog. Um, he had a haircut today because he was kind of getting like that woolly bear look. Um, he's a doodle, so you have to cut his hair every few months. But anyway, so for those that don't know who I am, my name is Katie Sweetman and I am an astrologer and psychic medium located here in the New York City area. And every week we got live to look at the astrology and how you hear me say every week, the astrology is 50%. You are the other 50%. That's the thing. Astrology is just time and energy. How are you going to live that time and energy? For example, how are you going to live 2024? So one of the things that I want to talk about this week is that we have a Capricorn new moon and what and i think i even said this last week i mean one of the funny things about astrology it's not really funny it's just sort of funny to me as an astrologer is that it's a completely different calendar system meaning january 1st is not you know it doesn't sort of turn us over into a new astrology even though i did three hours of talking about um, the astrology of 2024 it one of the reasons i have to talk about a lot of different things is because it yeah, it's a year that brings from different cycles of time, for example. In 2024, it's not like everything sort of magically starts. It pulls from Uranus went into Taurus 2018 and 2019. Saturn went into Pisces March 2023. So we're sort of seeing these different threads 
come into the new year for us. But that said, it's not a coincidence that it's in Capricorn season where we make resolutions. We make, and, and, and I'm not saying resolutions where it has to be punitive, where like, oh, I didn't do well enough. I mean, as much as I love sh- Saturn, I know that it's an energy that can be a little heavy. Saturn, Saturn was Capricorn season. But Saturn talks about commitments, commitments to ourselves, commitments to others, commitments to our life. So what commitments are you making as you go into the new year? New Year's only a a week, a week behind us. We're the fresh 2024. Being able to Capricorn energy can be heavy. We can feel it critically. We can feel it like we didn't achieve something. But if you use this energy positively, and, and I, it's my belief that in astrology, this, both the zodiac, both the planets, they're both you know positive and negative expressions. It's not to value uh, judgment on it, but one is constructive, one is destructive. So let's use Capricorn season constructively. To do Capricorn constructively is to do just that. Construct, construct your year, construct your month build, set, make plans. Um, of course, we can have flexibility, but we're making that sort of decision and choice and commitment to go into the new year, to make a change, to set some goals, to cut things out, to set a bar, to be accountable to hold other people accountable. So I want to say all this because we've got this Capricorn new moon on January 11th. Yes, January 11th. And that Capricorn new moon, it brings in the energies of Mars in Capricorn. Mars is something called exalted in Capricorn. It's a little bit of a technical point, but it's an important point because Mars does some of his best work in Capricorn. Mars, action, motivation, drive, determination. Picking up on the energies of Capricorn, it is focused, it is goal-oriented, it follows through, it has the stamina and will to get to the longer range goal. So we have that energy as we start the week, as we start the Capricorn lunar month, because that's the thing. Even though Capricorn season began three weeks ago, we had to wait three weeks for the Capricorn new moon to really sort of cement us and start this new Capricorn um, you know, season, um, right? Um, but that said, you know, with this Capricorn new, we have Mars in uh, Capricorn, and we also have Mars trying Jupiter. Mars and Jupiter together, they are typically very confident, uh, very inspired. There's a lot of you know going after something, but it's an act of faith. Yes, Mars and Jupiter can be overconfident. But we have this sort of like, let's set our sails, let's go on an adventure, let's go towards the, the thing, the goal, the, you know, this sort of bigger ambition with the Mars and Jupiter in this new moon. Something to keep in mind is that this is the first Capricorn new moon in 30 years, yes, 30 years, that has the energies of Saturn in Pisces. I may have talked about this last week, but there's this whole thing in astrology called rulerships. Rulership's a little bit technical, but it's important. It really shows us where the energy of one um, you know, planet or, or you know, as planets go through the different signs pulls to another sign. The ruler of Capricorn season is Saturn. So that's why I was talking about Saturn earlier and Saturn commitment, setting structures, setting boundaries, growth, maturity, um, time and aging, teeth and bones, not exactly fun stuff with the teeth and bones part, but Saturn reminds us that we need structure, we need bones in our life. But that said, since March 7th of 2023, Saturn has been in Pisces. Saturn has not been in Pisces since 1994, five and six. And if you are of that age, you need, uh, you're having something called a Saturn return. You need to talk to me, but uh, the Saturn return is a sort of major marker where you make, you say yes to life. You commit to life and you commit to the path ahead, for example. But that said, Pisces is a very different energy than Capricorn in the sense of how I think we're often conditioned to think of Capricorn. Capricorn, it's the sign of matter in the material world, of physical manifestation, time, um, the things that are solid and built and power. 
And we often think about that in terms of like reaching success and building at any cost, meaning I don't care who it affects, I don't care how it, it, it uh, you know, it impacts other people. Well, that's, that's a, the shadow side of Capricorn. You know, Capricorn as a, a constructive energy, positively at least towards, you know, let's say Pisces, Golden and Ames, will construct for something that is the support for something that's in our heart, in our spirit. It's aligned with something that feels very mission guided. It, you know, Pisces and by extension Sagittarius, two signs ruled by Jupiter. There's rulerships again. Um, these are two signs that want us to have a sense of mission and purpose in life. We can all, you know, build our lives. We can show up. We can do the duties and responsibilities that are uh, expected of us. But we can easily burnt out if it's not supported by something. Earth so can support water. Pisces is a water sign. So Pisces is also, and I was saying this in the introduction, it's the last sign of the zodiac. It is the bridge between the physical and the material and the non-physical and the non-material. And so it has a different, typically a different agenda than, you know, ambition, uh, success, money, power at any cost. I'm not saying there's necessarily bad things. But when they are used to, you know, for altruistic means or for something that's regenerative or constructive, it's a very different energy. We have physical bodies. We can't forget that we have physical bodies. We have to take care of those physical bodies. We need to make sure that we have a roof over our head. Um, we have support and we have resources, I hope. So how do we start to look at our lives or at least look to, at our goals and ambitions for the coming year as something that's a little bit more heart and spirit align something that is built around a sense of mission and purpose something that reflects something that maybe has been revealed to you over the last uh, gosh eight nine months with saturn and pisces it's a very artistic saturn pisces is a very artistic sign it sort of takes that artistic energy almost like an antenna almost like an, an intuitive act a spiritual act so maybe we make our life an art this year we don't always think about sort of taking the constructive energy of capricorn and using it to artistic purposes and means so that's just one way of looking at this capricorn new moon sort of honoring the energies of pisces alongside sort of the traditional things that we think about capricorn and even the things that we think about doing at the start of the new year the other thing about this new moon and i think i've said this in the introduction it comes at the midpoint of the eclipses so it's like i yes there is sort of this really um you know nice energy to start the year off to really set some goals and ambitions but and it's a new moon that comes three months after the solar eclipse of october 14th of 2023 when you see and this is because the the new moon squares the lunar nodes the lunar nodes are in uh in uh yes it's look at you know Miguel. Uh, it's because the lunar nodes are in Aries and Libra. They've been in Aries and Libra since 2023. The lunar nodes, without going into a, a bit of a detour, they talk about this sort of evolutionary arc that we all go through collectively throughout the year. South node Libra, we have to look at south node past, memory, instinct, the things that are unresolved, relationships not just uh, relationships romantic relationships but how do we connect and interact and socialize with people libra is a very accommodating sign and there's good things to that it naturally wants peace it wants to negotiate it wants to find something that benefits everybody south node in libra we have to look at where we have not uh, gone after our, what our desires where we've maybe capitulated our wants and our needs in, in in seeking out peace of course we have to negotiate but sometimes we can get lost in the mix or somebody else's wants and needs desires are greater than our own and not in a healthy like i have to take care of my family sort of way it's sometimes in relationships for example we can completely lose ourselves. 
North node in Aries says that this is a year where we are trying to find our individuality. We are trying to reconnect with our desires. Uh, we are trying to uh, really you know, take action and go after what we want. So with this Capricorn new moon, it squares the nodes 90 degrees and we're getting a little bit of a ripple of eclipse energy and something that I've noticed that sometimes it takes three months for us to see what that eclipse was about. So somewhere in your chart, when we go through each of the 12 zodiac signs, we will refresh ourselves. What part of your astrology had that Libra new moon, that solar eclipse back in October and how that connects to this Capricorn new moon, for example. And you know where maybe the theme can come up. It is also because eclipses are a little bit funny with time and sort of really shows us that time is not linear, is that sometimes we can see the eclipse come, meaning the eclipse that's going to be on April 8th at uh, 19 degrees of Aries, maybe we are seeing that Aries part of our life activated. So it's just to look at this week, it's not to necessarily expect anything, it's just to observe, it's just to watch, and it's to see like how do we, you know, kind of connect to events from October, taking notes, taking like a journal or something, and, and when we get to April and maybe even to May, seeing how those themes come back up again. So let's, oh, and I also wanted to say, um, and we will talk more about the, this this next week, is that Pluto gets to the end, actually, well, it's not gets to, it is at the end of Capricorn. Um, it's been at 29 degrees probably since the you know, end of December. 29 degrees is the last, sign, uh, last degree of the Zodiac, and Pluto will go into Aquarius next week on January 20th. And, um, and it's hard to scare my dog. It will go into Aquarius. Um, and I've, this is something I've been saying even since last year. We are in sort of in the hinge. We're sort of in between eras. Pluto doesn't change signs very often. In fact, when it went into Aquarius just this past uh, March to June of 2023, it had been in Aquarius since the 1790s. Yes, 1790s. So we're sort of in the beginning of something. I think we need a little bit more, um, you know, road behind us, metaphorically speaking, to see, or at least to sense what Pluto is shifting into. But wherever that part of your chart is, and we, again, we'll talk about this next week, we'll, we'll see what Pluto is activating. What, what, where is Aquarius in your astrology? Even if you're like, I don't have anything in Aquarius, I don't have anything in Aquarius except for asteroids, but that part of my chart represents um, something in my life for example. So let's just kind of quickly look at the astrology of this week because some of these aspects are actually a part of the Capricorn new moon. So the astrology for January, uh, oh gosh, almost at seven, January 8th through 14th, 2024. So we start the week, you know, speaking, you know, speaking of which, Mercury square Neptune. So trying to get the my, my words out. Mercury squared Neptune. And uh, Mercury is wrapping up its time in Sagittarius. And in fact, it will go back into Capricorn. I say go back because Mercury was retrograde throughout December. And it went from Capricorn to Sagittarius. Now it's in Sag. It's going back to Capricorn on the 13th. Before it does so, it makes a square to Neptune. Neptune's kind of a funny influence when it comes to Mercury. It can be very artistic, it can be very creative, it can be very poetic. It sort of takes writing, thinking, communicating, and it dissolves the boundaries between the physical plane and the non-physical plane. It's very intuitive, for example. And it may mean, especially as we start the week, we are in the dark of the moon, meaning we're in the last few days of the lunar month, lunar month that began on January 12th, and we need to maybe consult our intuition. We need to listen to the voice in the back of our head that maybe we're not listening to. The dark of the moon is when the moon gets to its faintest and we typically are wrapping something up. We need to go within, we need to shed in order to prepare for, for the new moon. In this case, will be the new moon on January 12th. 
because this is a Capricorn new moon that wants to make things real, because it has sort of this really bold energy of Mars and Jupiter, it's like we're really ready to get out the gate, so to speak, with this new moon. But it's it's important to really sit with ourselves and to really vision and, and you know think about how we want to use this very constructive Capricorn new moon. Then we get to uh, Tuesday the 9th and, and Mars and Saturn make a sextile. I don't normally mention sextiles, uh, it's a 60 degree angle, it's a little quiet, but it sort of adds to the sort of smoothing, the smoothing things over and opening up some doors with this Capricorn new moon. Then we get also on the uh, the ninth we have a trine between the sun and uh, Uranus. Again, this is more energy that builds into the Capricorn new moon of the twelfth. Uranus is a little bit different than Capricorn season and Saturn because Uranus talks about reinvention. So even though we have sort of the traditional and structural energies of the Capricorn new moon, there is the opportunity to revision something, to reapproach something, to see things from a different perspective and maybe to vision something that we can then start to bring into reality. Then we get to the 10th, the sun squares the lunar nodes. This is the aspect that's really throughout the week and into next week with the new moon where we are at a bit of a crossroads. This only happens twice a year. Um, it would be about a year ago. No, no I can't do math while I'm doing this point. But anyway, the, 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 the square to the lunar nodes is the uh, ripple of eclipse energy. And that's maybe bringing uh, things in and out of our life. It is a direct connection to events in October or events to come in March and April. With that in mind, uh, there may be important events that are happening this week. That's not to say this is going to be the case for everybody, but uh, for some of you, it really is a milestone or a checkpoint in something that's already been happening, for example. Then we get to the uh, 11th, I think it's the 12th was the new moon, but actually it's still the 11th, so sorry about that. But um, on the 11th, we have the Capricorn new moon at 20 degrees. How are you going to use this energy? What do you want to build? What do you want to change? What do you want to commit to? What do you want to clean up and clear out? We don't always think of Capricorn uh, with the energies of Virgo, but don't forget that Capricorn is Virgo's fifth sign. It takes the energies of Virgo and it makes something real and solid and concrete with them. So we need a plan as we go into this week. Then we get to the 12th and we have Mars trying Jupiter. I already talked a little bit about this, but Mars is in Capricorn and Ju uh, Jupiter is in Taurus. So this is the energy that's ready to start something new, ready to set sail, go on an adventure, to really make that leap of faith and maybe even to have the confidence to create some structural change as we go into the year. Then we get to the 13th and Mercury goes back into Capricorn. So Mercury in Capricorn is a little bit of a different animal, so to speak, than uh, Sagittarius. Capricorn's a little bit more cut and dry, uh, facts driven. Um, and I think also that Mercury in Capricorn really talks about needing to have the maturity and responsibility to make the right choices. So maybe this sort of brings us into the weekend and we can then use the Mercury energy to make a commitment or get you know, very clear about the things that we are you know, saying, speaking and communicating. So that is your look at the astrology of this week. Let's uh, jump ahead and, and look at the astrology for each of the 12 zodiac signs. You know, listen for your sun sign and listen for your rising sign. Starting with Aries. Aries, so Mars is your planet, and as you probably know, since December, it's been in Capricorn. Not December, since January 4th, it's been in Capricorn. So this is your time, this takes you into the middle of February, I talked about it last week, to really focus on either your professional life, your duties and responsibilities in the world, your ambitions, your goals, your, your the title after your name, and how even you know your public profile, your public reputation, how people see you. It is a very public, of course, this word means different things to different areas. It's a very public time for you into the middle of February. 
taking upon the energies of the Capricorn new moon, how are you going to use them? It's a very proactive you know, new moon for you. Do you want to make a job change? Are you trying to make changes in your professional life or changes in your direction that align with more your vision for your future or even what you feel is a greater goal, meaning like um, you know, something that feels a little bit more altruistic or something that's a little bit more spirit and community minded. It is worth mentioning, although I will talk more about this next week, that Pluto has come to the end of your, your career, Sun Capricorn. Um, it entered 15, 16 years ago. So this is sort of coming to the end of a great chapter of your life that really remade and, and for some of you profoundly remade your professional life and career. That said, something that I was talking about in the introduction, you know, keep in mind, uh, uh, Aries, that you had a solar eclipse new moon on, back in October in your relationship sign. So these are big eclipses for you, whether it's the eclipse that we had this, just this past October, whether it's the eclipse to come in Aries April 8th, and even the Libra lunar eclipse on March 25th. So something about this new moon period, even going into the next couple of weeks, really sets the stage for the next few months and really is the bridge between some major, uh, and again, it means different things in different areas, a lot of the changes or uh, you know, in, whether changes in a relationship or rather dynamic changes in your life as, as a whole. Um, Taurus, Taurus. So we got Venus, it's and gosh, it's like completely went blank. Where's, where's your Venus right now? Your Venus is still in, I think, Sagittarius. That's where your Venus is. I'm gonna look at my calendar. Um, Venus, anyway, I'm pretty sure it's still in Sagittarius. Yes, it's in Sagittarius. Yeah, it took me a minute to figure that out. But Venus is in Sagittarius and it will be in Sagittarius for the next few weeks. And that is your eighth sign. So it's a little bit of an emotional start to the new year. One that has you looking inward, trying to you know get down into the nitty gritty, figure out what you believe in, what you stand for, and how maybe you want to... Uh, go into the new year on a little bit of a new footing. That said, it is a Capricorn new moon this week and it highlights something called your ninth sign. It is a very philosophical uh, time for you, one year where you're really thinking about orientation, like what are you orienting your life towards? Keep in mind that this is all against the backdrop of the larger changes that have been happening in your sign since 2018, 2019. You've had Uranus in, in Taurus since 2018, 2019. You have Jupiter there right now, though it's been there just since this past May. So I think when you get into uh, Venus going into Capricorn um, later this month on the 23rd, so I think that's next week, um, but Venus and Capricorn, that's going to really ask you to go out to the world, to really focus on what you believe in, what you stand for, what is your life built around? And these are big questions. Capricorn, it's, it's big energy. It really talks about everything that your life is sort of built and constructed around. We will talk more about this next week, but it sort of heads up. And I have spoken about this before, but Pluto is about to go into your career sign. It will spend, by the time it fully goes into Aquarius, and that's in November this year, it'll spend 20 years in your career sign. We got a lot of things to talk about, um, uh, Taurus. But that said, this eclipse is a little bit, again, philosophical, for, you know, this new moon is a little bit more philosophical for you. And it picks up on the energies of the, um, the eclipse that we had in October, which is something called your sixth sign. That energy, um, it's and it's going to be different for every Taurus. It's like really asking you to take command, take control of your day-to-day -day life, to put new systems in place, to create new organization, to even take care of your physical body differently. For some, it's a look at health and wellness. And how do you, you know, if it's if it's something more structural about your day-to-day -day life, meaning your duties and responsibilities, the things that you have to do on a day-to-day -day level making sure that that lines up with you know your truth your faith your convictions for example 
It's not the huge pivot point like it is for other signs this week. It's really just trying to open up your eyes to the world and get you to see things a little bit differently. Gemini. So Mercury is your planet and it's just about to leave Sagittarius. Your relationship sign has been in time for you. Of course, it's going to be different for every uh, Gemini, but it's a bit of need to wrap up something from the past. Maybe something about a relationship, maybe something about how you connect and interact and socialize with people. And then Mercury will go back to uh, Capricorn where it was back in December. Capricorn's kind of an interesting sign for you. It's something called your eighth. The eighth is the space where we have to do a lot of deep work, a lot of emotional heavy lifting. It's just a part of life. That's the thing about the zodiac. Regardless of what sign, sun sign you are, or what rising sign you are, the eighth represents the space in the astrology where we are tested by life. I know you're like, I don't want to like this. Mercury will, will zip through relatively uh, through, uh, through the 8th. It goes into Aquarius on the 5th of February. But I think it's also worthwhile <clears throat> that Pluto is wrapping up its time in your 8th. It's been in your 8th for 16 years. I know, 16 years. Reflect back on the person you were in 2008. Has there been some emotional restructuring? Has there been some emotional heavy lifting? Was there therapy? Was there a lot of inner work? Pluto has just been holding a mirror to you for the better part of a decade and a half. And so Mercury's time in, in Capricorn, maybe it's just to sort of wrap up some bigger, you know, you know, light bulbs, hopefully, that have gone off over the last 15 years. That said, Capricorn new moon, it is a new moon that really puts the focus on um, your emotional health and wellness, your psyche, um, trust, vulnerability, power, control, rebirth, even finances, money, and assets that might be a focus as you're going into the new year. I think taking a leaf out of Capricorn season and, and sort of the, the starting of the new year is like, how can you clean up within I'm sure everything is fine. You don't have to clean up. But how do you do that deep digging, you know, not in your home, not physically in your home, but do it within? And maybe that's what this energy is really asking of you. So how do you use that proactively and positively as you go into the new year? This eclipse, not eclipse, not eclipse, this new moon, it plays off of the eclipse that was in something called your fifth. For some, that, that eclipse back in October was about uh, self-individuality, self-expression, maybe children, maybe creativity. But sometimes the relationship between the fifth and the eighth is where we have to look at our inner saboteur. We need to look at the ego and the part of ourselves that maybe isn't always the most helpful part of ourselves, just a part of life. Um, but that said, Mercury, your planet, yes, it goes back to Capricorn on the third so this is a little bit of an emotional time as you go into the middle of gosh the middle of January um cancer cancer so the moon is coming to the end of its lunar cycle <clears throat> so this is the last few days between the, before the new moon and it's something called the dark of the moon so this is typically a time when you're a little bit lower in energy, you need to spend time within, meditate, reflect. You may feel, especially with the Capricorn new moon and Mars and Jupiter, that you get this big boost and reset of energy as you get into the second half of the week. That said, and you're know, speaking of Capricorn, Capricorn is your relationship sign. Of course, every Cancer or Cancer rising has lived this time differently over the last 15 years, like 15, 16 years. Um, it's important to note, and I might have even mentioned this last week, is that Pluto is wrapping up its time in your relationship sign. Yes, it has been there for 16 years. It will not return, well, from September, November, it will return, but by the end of 2024, it's done. Over the last decade plus, you've needed to do a lot of deep work on connection, relationship, socialization, power dynamics. Again, every Cancer is going to live this time differently. This is the last Capricorn new moon with Pluto 
in your in Capricorn in your seventh your relationships for 250 years and I'm so sorry you're not going to live that long but a new moon is a new beginning it's a new initiative it's a time to bring new people into your life it's time to focus on existing relationships and for some uh let's say clean out old relationships and maybe doing that having known that you've done a lot of deep inner work to reflect some of the positive changes that you're making for yourself even if it's just to choose yourself over the coming days and weeks um, but that said, this new moon, it does play off of the eclipse three months before that was in something called your home, fourth. And so um, I've seen it already, a lot of cancers or cancer risings, they have made changes in their home environment, they have moved, somebody who has moved in, somebody who has moved out. This uh, new moon is also three months before a solar eclipse, April the 8th, in your career sign. So this is a very dynamic time for you, Cancer. It's like when you look back at 2023 and four, it's just one of those years where a lot is happening. It's neither good nor bad. It means really focusing on home and family, career, the direction that your life is taking, responsibilities, relationships. And these are three of the four pillars of life. This is at least is what astrology teaches us teaches us so really see like what is the new initiatives that want to you know how do you want to use this energy especially when relationship as you go into the second half of this week and even into the next week and then next week we will talk about pluto leaving capricorn and what are the big takeaways for example leo Leo, so Capricorn season for you is something called your sixth sign. Capricorn is Leo's sixth sign. What does that mean? It sounds technical. Well, what do we do at the start of the year? We typically do the inventory of self and our achievements and maybe even looking at our physical life and how we need to either do better in our physical life or make some healthy, positive commitments to ourselves. So the Capricorn new moon is, you know, exactly as you would expect this time of year. Set health goals for your for your health and wellness. Um, it's not a comment about how you need to, to do less of this or do more of this. That is completely up to you. It's to, and I think ultimately, it's just about equilibrium. It's just about balance and what is in balance, what is not in balance, what is working, what is not working. Capricorn energy typically wants things in balance. It's like it's jam, it's MO. So going into the next four weeks and into, um, into February is how do you use energy to make positive and constructive changes in your day to day life? Even if it means making sure that you show up on time, you follow through with your commitments, you are accountable to yourself and others, uh, you are starting a project, you are really setting your goals. I know it's a maybe not a really glamorous time, it's a very constructive and uh, you know, very down to earth time. That said, um, this uh, new moon, it does echo off the fact that Pluto has been in this space for 16 years. You know, what has been the changes in your day-to-day -day life or your health and wellness, your relationship with your body, your relationship with your grounding and being here, even service and helping other people? Because that's kind of in the mix. It's not directly in the mix, but it's definitely in the mix. So I would, again, use this to sort of build upon all the positive changes you've made with Pluto over the last decade plus. This new moon does play off of the eclipse that happened uh, three months ago. That was in Libra. For you, Leo, Libra is something called your third sign. So this is not as dramatic as maybe as, let's say, Cancer or Capricorn or Aries and Libra. This part of the chart talks about voice and communication, education. You need to prioritize your education, really look and focus on how you use your voice, for example. And for some, choices. And to see how those choices are directly connected to some of the healthy and positive and constructive changes that you may, it's up to you, it's your life, um, want to do as you go into this week, next week. Virgo. 
Virgo. So Mercury is your planet and it's wrapping up its time in Sagittarius. This has been a review for you, something about the past, something about home and family. I say review because in December, Mercury was retrograde. It will go back into Capricorn on the 13th. Saturday, it was in Capricorn in December. So it's sort of retracing your steps a little bit. And I think as we discovered with um, Gemini, Mercury is going back to Aquarius in the beginning of February on the 5th. But that said, meaning like you get like new energy, new perspective, a little fresh air, for example. So you, you're still retracing your steps a little bit. To go back to Capricorn is to focus on some level to the self. There's two types of self. There's sort of the, that raw self, wants and desires, actions. That's the energy of Aries, Mars. But then there's the self, Leo, personality, individuality, the things that make you, you. As you think, I thought we were talking about Capricorn. Well, yes, Capricorn is a stand-in for that part of your astrology. It is a time for you, especially with the Capricorn, new moon on the 11th to really focus on what makes you you what are your talents and gifts and abilities are you taking your talents and gifts and abilities seriously what are your creative projects you're an earth sign um how are you expressing yourself and you know do you sometimes not express yourself it is important to take this within context. We will talk more about this next week, is that Pluto has been in this part of your chart since 2008, yes, 16 years ago. So this part of your chart has seen a lot of structural changes over the last decade, and maybe the structure of you and how you express who you are and your sense of self has seen some big changes. Maybe you've powerfully had to take yourself and take your talents seriously. So we have Capricorn new moon and that Capricorn new moon is directly connecting to Saturn and Pisces and Pisces is a relationship sign. So maybe even though this is a, a, a time about self, even romance, the romance of self and how that shows up and how you interact and connect and socialize. And maybe in some way there is something about new relationship initiatives with this new moon. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh, I know what I want to say. So this new moon, it plays off the eclipse energy um, that was happening in Libra, which happens to be your second sign of money and income. So really, uh, you know, time that takes you into April, where it is focusing on money and finance, assets, um, the things that you own, the things that you invest in, even benefits and setting up for the future and how this new moon um, will play off that eclipse from October. And so, you know, for some Virgos, it is about, you know, investments, meaning investments in property, making purchases, buying a home. Maybe it's something with a partner, uh, a romantic partner, or just a partner in general. Libra. Libra. So Venus is your planet and it's still in Sagittarius. So you're in a time that's focusing on voice, communication, how you think and listen. And it's a little bit of a busy time. Maybe you're feeling the urge to travel, the urge to explore, the urge to write, to speak, communicate, um, even focus on education, if I didn't say that already. And um, as I found out, and Venus will go into Capricorn on the 23rd, so just a little over a week from now and that's uh, I think that's the one to really pay attention to because when Venus goes into Capricorn it's going to start to play off eclipse energy and that's a good segue to you you had an eclipse in your sign on October 14th of 2023 you're like hey that's three months ago but that's the funny thing about eclipses is that it plants a seed it says on some level and this also takes us from the uh there was a Aries solar eclipse on April 20th of 2023. This is a dynamic time in your life. Dynamic time means things are changing. You're at a crossroads. It's about relationships. It's about you. It's it's about family. It's about the future. It's it's you know sort of really hitting these uh, sometimes major milestones of life. And maybe if you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, Katie, we will see. Um, but this eclipse planted a seed. And then when Venus goes into Capricorn on the 23rd, it activates the seed even more. But we also have the Capricorn new moon on the 11th of this of this week. 
have one for you as a sign of home and family. It's your household, it's your address, it's parents, it's past, it's ancestors, it's foundation, it's roots, it's that core emotional root that we all have. And it's what it's a part of the chart that really supports the entirety of your life. When you see a new moon in the space, typically your attention is turned towards home and family, even if that's more of an abstract comment, because not everybody has, let's say, you know, close family members in their life, or maybe you don't have children or you don't have a partner. It's not about necessarily that you need these things, but we all need to feel anchored, rooted, and grounded. So how does that manifest in your life this week? And how does that play upon sort of the dynamic energies that have been seeded in your astrology? And this sets us up for the solar eclipse in Aries that's going to be on April 8th. Aries is your relationship sign. So you see if you feel like there's a lot of initiative and maybe because this, um, you know, the, not Mercury, Mars is trying Jupiter. And if you're in a relationship, you know, maybe you and your partner are making some big changes, some big choices. Maybe there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of leaps of faith. Maybe if you're not in a serious relationship, there is something about commitment and setting boundaries and getting clear about things. So it's gonna, you have to sort of see how it manifests for you. But this is a big time to be a Libra. Scorpio. Scorpio, so Mars is your planet and it's in Capricorn. And Capricorn for you is something called your third sign. I think we talked about this last week, but it's good to keep talking about it. It's, it's really about uh, movement and voice and communication and getting things done. And Capricorn is a sign of leadership and um, um, authority, what's that word? And how are you really showing up and being an authority and even standing behind the things that you have to say? That's the thing about Capricorn energy. We can't cut corners. We can't say one thing and, meet and, and do the opposite. We have to really be you know, razor sharp, straight as a, you know, as an arrow when we have planets, your planets going through Capricorn. Maybe a time that's really talking about commitment and duties and responsibilities and having to take a step up. Keep that in mind. Capricorn new moon on the 11th. For you, Capricorn also talks about travel and exploration and maybe you have a trip plan. Maybe you're on the go and on the move, for example. Mars is a very action-oriented planet, even as your ruler. So you may feel that you're really using this energy to set something in motion and to really build for the future. It's important to mention that this new moon, although not right on Pluto in, in Capricorn, Pluto is wrapping up its time in Capricorn where it's been for 16 years. This is nearly the finale of you really doing a lot of deep work with voice. Voice just means not opening your mouth and people necessarily hearing you, although that's one part of voice. It's your ability to take something that is inside of you and have it live through your voice, be able to be heard and to be heard on a deeper level. So it's to see how that is relevant for you. Uh, I mean, for you, Scorpio, the eclipse that was on um, October uh, 14th was in something called your 12th. You're in a six month period that for some is about endings, transitions, something leaving so that something new can come into your life. It may be about service, spiritual service, needing to really get within and to figure out what is the meaning and purpose of your life. I know, no big deal, just some some big question marks, but it's a it's a turning point in some of these deeper existential questions, for example. Sagittarius, Sagittarius. So I think, I think I said this last week, there's a lot going on in your astrology right now, although this new moon sort of takes a little bit of the focus off, but it does sort of plug into these bigger stories that are happening in your astrology. It's big milestones in Capricorn, Capricorn in Sagittarius's astrology settling down. I realize that that, those, that phrase means different things to different people. It's sort of focusing on your roots, your foundation, home and family, starting a family, moving major chapters in your life. This will be more the second half of the year when Jupiter, your planet, goes into Gemini. 
This Capricorn new moon picks up on Saturn in the fourth. Pisces. Pisces is your base and foundation in your astrology. But that said, Capricorn is a money sign for you. And on some level, it's over the next four weeks, and especially with the energy of this new moon, making new initiatives. It could be initiatives around spending, initiatives around what you value and what you feel that you are worth, or what, sort of these maybe deeper themes about self-worth. And maybe it's about material stability and security. At the end of the day, the second sign, in this case Capricorn, talks that we talks about how we need a roof over our head, money in the bank, food in the kitchen, these sort of basics that we need to make sure are rock solid. So how are you using this energy to use it proactively to make sure your material life is rooted and rock solid and grounded? And for some, maybe you are thinking about moving, maybe you are, um, maybe you are making, um, purchasing a home and, and getting a mortgage and sort of looking at spending around that, making spending in the home. Again, it's going to be different things for different Sagittariuses. The new moon plays off an eclipse that was in your 11th. It's about community, society, humanity, your roles in groups, your, your, you know, the social issues and social causes that drive your life, the feeling of belonging. And so it is getting into sort of making something manifest in that part of your life, meaning it's um, something about a friendship, something about a group connection, something about commitment. And that may be in the mix with the astrology of this week. But again, it's a big time in Capricorn's astrology. Um, you know, again, with so much happening around money and finance in the home, it's just to make sure some key areas of your life are as much as you can rooted and grounded. Capricorn, Capricorn, happy birthday, happy, you know, if late in the season birthday, if your birthday is uh, from the 8th to the 14th, for example. Capricorn season, you have a Capricorn new moon on the 11th. If your birthday is the 11th plus or minus a couple of days, it is a powerful new year and certainly one that's going to bring the energies of Mars and Jupiter with you. Possibly a lot of movement, a lot of change, a lot of transformation. And this new moon picks up on the eclipses that had happened um, October 14th of 2023. And the solar eclipse to come in Aries, which is your home, your, your household, on April 8th. It's a very dynamic time to be a Capricorn, um, you, especially a Capricorn season. And then we get into Aries season, get into Libra season, get into Cancer season. You're going to see major, possibly major personal milestones. With Saturn and, and Pisces, it'll be in Pisces for a couple more years. It's not enough just to sort of tick boxes. Typically Capricorn is a tick box type of sign, check the boxes type of sign. Pisces means it has to line up with your spirit, your heart, your soul. It has to be aligned with a greater sense of mission and purpose. The structures, sort of the achievements that you're working towards have to be the support of something. Of course, this is going to mean different things to different Capricorns, but it's a it's a big time for you. Um, and I think more so, you know, with Mars now and Capricorn, the energies of the new moon, Mars trying Jupiter, um, you're really looking to launch yourself into this new year. Sorry, I just keep looking at my, my dog. Um, but yeah, there you go. But it's again, it's it's a turning point week for you, Capricorn. Um, Aquarius. Aquarius, so Saturn is your planet and, and, and it's in Pisces, your money sign, and it continues to be a, a time to really focus on your material life, even if that's more of an abstraction, sort of like, what do I spend my money on? What do I, what do I need? Like, is this aligned with my sense of mission and purpose in life? That said, Aquarius, you have a Capricorn new moon in something called your 12th. This is the new moon that precedes your, your, your birthday season. The 12th, and we all have a 12th, it just so happens that Capricorn is your 12th. It represents the end of your personal calendar, the end of your personal zodiac. This is the space that is not material, which is interesting because with Saturn in your second, it's so much about your material life right now. This gets into sort of these bigger existential questions around money, around uh, 
ownership and property around sort of these bigger questions about our material lives. You know, what is it all for? We can't take it with us. I'm not saying abandon um, you know, what you own and sort of stability and security, but there's a bit of an existential vibe as you go into this week and into next week. Capricorn uh, energy, Capricorn new moon, it wants to pull you within. Use this to meditate, use this to reflect, use this to recuperate, get, get some sleep, all to prepare for your birthday season that begins on uh, January 20th. We will talk more about this next week. It's a, it's a big conversation. You Pluto going into Aquarius. This is only going to happen once in your lifetime, and it's a two-decade transit. Talk to your Capricorn friends. Ask them about Pluto and Capricorn, a little bit of a dark humor. But it is a shift of season. It's a powerful shift of season for you. Again, it's a whole other conversation. Um, but that said, using the Capricorn new moon constructively to prepare for this new season, to clear out some space, even if that space is internal, not physical, so that you can go into this time that um, you had a little bit of a preview of it from, um, gosh, uh, 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 March of 2023 to June of 2023. So this will be January 2024 to September 1st of 2024, you know, this new life that you're on the on the cusp of what needs to leave, what needs to move. So use this time spiritually and internally to prepare yourself, that's what I would do, to step into this new chapter of your life. Finally, Pisces, you know, now, now Miguel's on his back, showing his belly, but uh, now no Pisces. So Pisces, um, and you know, I said this for Sagittarius and I said this for a couple of other signs, just a lot going on in your astrology right now that while this Capricorn new moon that we're having this week isn't necessarily, you know, hitting big points, it's by extension talking about you. Capricorn is something called your 11th sign. The 11th sign is almost to the end of our personal astrology. There's 12 signs in total. And it talks about the future, like where are we going? What do we want? What are our hopes and dreams? It also talks about the big moving parts of our life, uh, sort of you know, like our community, our sense of social circle and connection, social issues, social causes. So this new moon is getting into sort of the broader strokes of life. Maybe it will be a busy time over the next uh, few weeks where it is about friends and connection and community. This new moon points back to Saturn, which is in Pisces right now. Hey, you're Pisces. So you may need to take the lead in a in your community or with a group. You may need to take on more duties and responsibilities for a common cause or a common goal, for example. Maybe more is being asked of you. Maybe it's not within a group. It's really to take a command towards your future and making sure that that future is aligned with a sense of greater mission and purpose. Your Pisces, Pisces its heart and its soul has to be in it, for example. But this is a new moon that really, you know, uses the energies of Jupiter and Mars to like launch something, like to go after something. So this is also a new moon that plays off of the solar eclipse that happened three months before. And that solar eclipse was in something called your, got to do the quick math, uh, your eighth. October, and whether it was right before October, whether it's over the past few months, whether it's over the next few months to, to come, it's really a little bit of a, a emotional heavy lifting time for you, a time for a rebirth, time for transformations, time for doing, you know, focusing on emotional health and doing a lot of the, the inner work, if I didn't say that already. So this uh, new moon, and even though it's not an eclipse, may play upon that seed that was planted back in October. It's also talking about finance and money and maybe your financial goals as you go into the future. But it also is three months before a solar eclipse in Aries, which is your second sign of money and income. So there may be financial themes and sort of fi finances for the future that play into this week's astrology. That said, with Mercury leaving Sagittarius, uh, your career sign going into Capricorn over the next couple of weeks, it's really to focus on the future, your hopes, your dreams, your goals and ambitions for 2024 and beyond. So 
That is your look at the astrology of this week, January 8th through 14th, 2024. My name is Katie Sweetman. Uh, this is um, Empowering Astrology. You can follow me online, empoweringastrology.com. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on Spotify. I'm on YouTube. Yes, I have a dog. And um, sign up for my 2024 webinar. It's three hours long. I also have some other links in the show notes. And we will talk all about Pluto next week. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.